we're in the second part please go check out the previous part to gauge your bearings i'm busy talking right now um in the first part i was basically highlighting just an epidemic of occult persistence on the lives of people that they feel uncomfortable in the presence of otherwise known as christians because they are uncomfortable about their own eternal state the law of god is written on the heart of mankind and these people by that law are being lambasted with a guilty conscience that they are ignoring they're searing it and i was warning in that previous video that if you sear your conscience long enough if you ignore it long enough if you basically pinch yourself into thinking about any other pain but the one in your heart concerning the wickedness that you are currently performing the law will ultimately give you your wildest dreams he will hand you over to a reprobate mind he will give you the desires of your wicked heart and you will be able to perform abominations without batting an eyelid on that day you will have nicely congratulated yourself into graduating into the level of a psychopath or a sociopath spiritually where it is that you can commit murder after murder after murder after murder after murder and still eat a mcdonald's burger afterwards that's what sociopaths are like that's what all of these random serial killers are like they kill and even in the middle of their shooting spree they're eating they no longer feel disgusted by seeing human guts and you guys in the occult get yourselves to a point where you are no longer feeling as bad after your 10th spell as you felt in your first you think that that is a benefit again until the lord crashes you and burns you into a christian until the lord encounters you with somebody who has held on to him and him only and then you realize that oh my goodness these christians these christians you then go to war with us you go to war with us you discover that there is a holiness without which no one will see god you are holding on to these bibles of yours underneath your armpits that you're clutching in offices everybody calls you mzalwani because you're always talking about jesus but you are practicing witchcraft you are the one that hosts bible studies every wednesday in your house you're the person that everyone in the church leans on you're the human being that's every so often taking over to preach a sermon when the pastor has called in sick you're that guy or you're that random female that is out here being an usher in the church that's you your, your leader go intercession and you carry on and 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 on like Eric Abadu. Yeah, you just keep carrying on and on and on and on until you meet a true Christian in your apostate country. You have such an apostate land that it would take you a good five, ten years before you realize there's something very severely wrong with your Christianity. Because all along you've been walking around a whole bunch of other Bazalanis that are just like you, bouncing up and down in these streets just like Usajan with no conviction at all and all of y'all pamper one another in your wickedness in other words you've gathered for yourself a great number of consolers to console you in what your itching ears love to hear you gather for yourself a great number of teachers to teach you what your itching ears want to hear in camaraderie you sway left to right singing kumbaya without having any real sincerity about that song to the lord that's you you have a, i was watching a short on youtube this one nigerian comedian dude making a joke out of nigerian christian women christian girls young nigerian christian girls that are on the come up like college students university students and he did a short where he was like basically showing this one girl he was like yeah god says don't wear clothing that like don't wear a man must not wear women's clothing and vice versa but anyway this man was wearing female clothes wearing a wig and everything trying to make a fun of christian women in nigeria christian young women in nigeria university age type thing in nigeria and he's wearing a wig and lipstick and everything and he is uh, like in church initially with church music in the background where he's like jesus uh, bring me closer to you make me holy as you are give me a stronger relationship with you jesus give me more jesus i want to be closer to you and then he starts also like praying in tongues and then it moves to the next scene and you the first scene that you see are his legs he is a very strong butch well-built nigerian man and you see like these like strong manly legs you would imagine that he is you you don't even know what you're looking at until the camera goes up 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 and you see a mini skirt she this dude is basically wearing a mini dress do you understand at the feet down below he was wearing sneakers so you would not know that that's what he was trying to do over there she's wearing a mini dress he is wearing a mini dress emulating this chick and then he keeps on moving and he's dancing to some club music Oomps, oomps, poof, poof. and he's busy singing and singing and singing and then up tops you see the wig and everything same girl same girl and like some funny little song com, com, go, no, no, or whatever yeah and i i can't yes i watched that short something like four or five times wagging my head instead of finding it funny i found it grieving 
because even worldly people that don't know Jesus are making fun of the apostate nature of Christian people. The apostasy of Christian people. The woman, the young woman in the short that he was representing started out in church saying, I want to get closer to you, Jesus. And then he showed her later on being in a club, drinking it up a storm with like all different kinds of like, yeah, you know, ornate displays of worldliness. That is a person that has no idea that one day the Lord is going to judge him for that short. But it also, but he not only is going to judge him for that short, but he will also judge all the Christians that basically created such a strong trend in that regard. That this would be a joke in a short on YouTube. A joke that people are laughing at that, that they can relate to. I of course went into the comments section and you will be thrown off your chair to learn how many people in that comments section said hey yeah it's me sunday i'm in church but on saturday night i was in the coin in that lab lab or i was like yeah you get my point basically a whole bunch of young women in the comment section saying ha 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 that's me ha 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 i can relate ha 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 that was me uh, trying to get closer to jesus on thursday and then next thing on saturday i'm in the club they're making a joke out of it it's apparently funny yet those same women that are in the comment section laughing about how it is that yeah thursday um, in the all night prayer but Saturday I'm in the club one day they're going to hate even having commented in that short because they're the ones that gave that young Nigerian man that idea to do that short because he made that observation about how it is that young women in Nigeria are they're not serious about God it's all a joke it's all a joke joke enough for him to make a whole bunch of money from a short on YouTube that is the Christianity of South Africa a whole bunch of people who make a joke out of their apostate nature. Despite God's word making it clear they're in. That in the last days there's going to be a great falling away. People are going to give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. They will not love the truth. They will take pleasure in their unrighteousness. People are going to basically make fun out of the fact that they have a leash to Christ. I'm Christian. But I'm in the club on Saturdays. And I mean the club is something of, the, of, the, uh, of, of young adults. Of the youth or maybe even teenagers. Right? When you get older. It's just a worldly carnal lifestyle. It's all this adultery in marriages, this irresponsible parenting, the consumption of content online that does not make any sense at all, participation in sorcery, all different kinds of things that adults that are out of the nightclub now can do to grieve God. But now, in all different kinds of strange tongues in a public congregation that they're not supposed to be doing in the first place, on a Saturday morning or a Sunday morning at church and then on Wednesday you're consulting a sangoma like it's clockwork and then on Thursday you're hosting Bible study in your house but yesterday you just saw a sangoma those lives and then somebody does a short about that ridiculousness and then you laugh at it you go in the comment section as one of the participants in the mutiny against the kingdom of heaven and you laugh at it until until of course you have a head-on collision with a Christian a real one until in this flaccid, fluffy, lukewarm, nasty country of yours, you meet with a real believer, evidencing Amos 8 and 11 as fulfilled. The day is coming when the Lord is going to send out a fair mind on the land, not a fair mind for food, nor that of a thirst of water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. You realize just how fair mind ravaged your country is when you meet a true Christian after five years of literally having no qualms with how you be rolling. Five years ago, Felaya Feta. You up and downing these streets of South Africa, going to all different kinds of conferences at church. And only after five years, you meet a believer that challenges you so violently that you now want to cause that believer to basically join the bandwagon. All of us are like this, Mus. We are all like this, Mus. For five years, all of it, I, I, like, proper, I've been a Christian five years. And you think that you're going to come here and change all of us. You're, you're the only one, Karab. Who do you think you are? You're not special, except I am. Why? Because the scriptures made it clear that narrow is the road that leads to life and few there be that find it. So when you encounter one little Christian after five years walking around in an apostasy with no conviction of that apostasy, it does not make that Christian someone that thinks they are special or rare. It only validates the veracity of the scriptures that even that famine in the land is going to get worse and worse at the last days because there's going to be a departing away from the faith, a falling away from the truth, a giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. It's going to be even worse in the last days. The road that is narrow that leads to life that few people find is going to be narrower still in the very last days. And so it'll be absolutely possible for people to complacently chill around for 20 years in a Christianity that does not save. And meet one disciple after 20 years of thinking you're saved. 
that's going to make you so uncomfortable with your wicked life that you will try to cause that person to fall to your level rather than realize that you're in danger because you're running with an unbiblical doctrine that there is safety in numbers no according to the scriptures if anything there is danger in numbers because the road is plenty as broad and many enter into it that is leading to destruction so quite the opposite is true rather in the faith that most people go to hell frankly most so when you've been rolling around in a grain with your conscience having been seared over years and then you encounter a Christian and you abuse them, you only fulfill God's word and is it first or second Peter where it is written that because we have walked away from the life of debauchery, you heap abuse on us. You abuse us because we walked away from that life and it eats you alive. To see us consecrated to the king of the universe, holding fast to him, suturing ourselves to his garments that we might not be ripped out of his hand. Not that we have to do that because after all, no one can snatch us out from his hands. But your attempt to cause the apostasy of a consecrated believer is only evidence of the barren nature of human hearts in these last days. It only shows how bad the apostasy is because all of y'all be Aja being able to relate with a, a blasphemous short, a sacrilegious short on YouTube. As Christians able to Christians con professing able to comment on a short of that nature on some <laughs> that's me giggling girl you're not gonna be able to giggle when you're facing a blazing God who is a fire do you understand an all-consuming fire as a wax figurine having not solidified yourself having not been made solid in Christ that when that fire burns you will still stand you are just wax you melt do you understand? <laughs> but you're giggling. You're laughing at what you can relate to because so many other Christians in the comments section are also able to relate. So many other men and women in the comment section can also relate with their incredible apostasy. So many other people are practicing witchcraft. They're mixing ancestors with Jesus. They're doing all these funny things and so you think you're safe. Ah, uh ah, -uh, now the road is broad that leads to destruction that many enter into. If you feel safe in numbers, you better start investigating if at all you're safe. You better start to investigate. If the world does not hate you, be afraid, be very afraid. If you have no persecution in your life, be afraid. The devil will always target a Christian from the get-go. I got persecuted the moment I got born again. I was never ever given any leg room to be a happy, chappy, fluffy, flying, butterfly Christian, ever. From the very moment I got saved, I was already being given vibes. Bad attitude, beef, strange treatment, side eyes by some people that I was out here rolling around these streets like birds of a feather, peas in a pod, and now they're out here giving me the side eye from the moment I got born again. The devil does not have time to be dilly-dallying, making a, a Christian feel comfortable. So if you are comfortable in a world that loves the devil, honey, check to see if you're in the faith at all. Check to see if you're in the faith at all. Yeah, we are in the last days. The great apostasy is upon us. And so it is utterly possible for you to not meet a Christian that's going to challenge whatever walk you have in whoever it is that you call Jesus Christ for years. And I am meeting right now with a whole bunch of diabolical beastly randos that are not born again, trying to make themselves feel comfortable with the life they've been living all along by getting me to come down to their strange level. And I'm like, do you not see we're in the last days? Do you not see that even my persecution, me being left out on a limb to basically gather dust? Do you understand? A woman just being left to pass away because she separated herself from the world. The fact that you know me, the fact that anybody at all that knows me, knows me, and yet is doing nothing about it, is only a, 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 a scream from their souls about their own apostasy. Their own apostasy. And they think, they call, like proper, I am being called a lost cause by people that knew me. A lost cause. What's the thing that makes me a lost cause? This life that I'm living in Christ, because apparently, allegedly, I am not in Christ or I am too serious or I am too whatever in Christ because uh, they too are in Christ. Their excuse for leaving me in this position is that they also are in Christ. So this cannot be about Christianity, except it is 100% about Christianity. It is 100% about Jesus. It is 100% about their apostasy and 100% about their persecution of a child of God while they are justifying it with their reputation for being alive even though they're dead their form of godliness that denies the power thereof it is 100 percent about all that and yet and yet i am a lost cause people are trying to get me to join the occult they are trying to get me to compromise settle in whatever capacity with a strange man whatever it is that they want me to do they are looking at me on some but everybody else is doing it and i'm like exactly precisely because everybody else is doing it that is why i want nothing to do with it so they look at me like i'm a little teacher's pet and just in the same way that you can't stand the teacher's pet in school, they can't stand me. But the teacher's pet, apparently, allegedly, is the kid that's missing out on life.
when it is clear that that's the kid that is careful. That is the kid with the self-control. That is the kid that has got a bright future. That's the kid that's probably going to be the most likely to succeed in that whole class of children. It is the kid that everybody hates for being a goody tissues. Do you understand? That ultimately turns out alright in the end. That is just a, like a life lesson that keeps on repeating itself over and over again. You would think that thanks to those lessons being provably um, demonstrated later on, that people would just choose not to walk in that dastardly way at all. That they might avert themselves from future, you know, um, consequences. But human humanity is doomed to repeat the very history that they are aware of, whether or not they know it. You know, there was a saying that if you don't know his uh, people who don't study history or know history are doomed to repeat it i would go so far as to say that people whether or not they know history are doomed to repeat it irrespective of our knowledge of consequences of what's happened in the past people just keep on doing the same thing over and over and over and over again it evidences our defeatism how over it is for us before it even starts it just displays the total depravity of human beings that we can't even learn from past lessons we are very aware of we just keep on doing the same stuff again, recycling rubbish over and over. Who is going to rescue you, you therefore, from that body of death? You do that which you don't want to do. Romans 7, Paul, you do that which you don't want to do. If you don't have mastery over the flesh by the Holy Spirit, dream on. Because we repeat a history we know, evidencing that we have no self-control, we're impetuous, we are incapable entirely in our own strength to do a better thing. So you cannot sit where you're sitting hating me and feel safe. And you cannot work so tirelessly to try and bring me down to your level to a point of afflicting me with demonic abuse and feel safe. I will survive this. Indeed, like you, I'm a meta-human, but one within the responsible kingdom. And unlike you, I'm not going to go on right ahead and curse you, cast spells on you. I'm just going to wait on God to finish you off. Something that you just can't. And even then, that patience in waiting on God to finish you off is mixed with magnanimity in the sense that if you repent, you don't gust to die. It doesn't have to end like that. It doesn't have to. You are given amnesty in the run-up too. You're given mercy, grace, magnanimity of God is your best friend. But when then you ignore all that grace, that long-suffering, that forbearance, that fortitude, you had it coming when you finally perish in your sins because you were dastardly, you were a menace. And menaces must be neutralized if they will not demenify. If they won't demenicide ties, if they won't unmenace up, if they won't retract, revert from their state of being a menace, they've got to be neutralized. And many of you have become menaces to society. And in the absence of reversing your menacehood, you have got to be extinguished, just like a fire, just like a flame. You've got to be snuffed out. And I've been saying all this time that if you do not repent, you will thoroughly perish. But in the run-up to your perishing, you will have been awarded so much mercy that you will obviously arrive in eternity with no excuse. You already presently have no excuse. Why? Because like I said earlier, Louis Armstrong, the trees are green, red roses too. You see them bloom for me and you. And you think to yourself, what a wonderful world. Coupled with the fact that you keep on snuffing out your guilty conscience, evidencing that you have one at all, evidencing that you've got the law of God written on your heart and you're ignoring it. Ignore it long enough, your conscience will be seared. Your dastardly general disposition will be ironed with a hot iron. It'll be flattened with a hot iron. And you will then be able to walk in a sociopathy that is unabated, with any guilt. Once you get there, it's over for you. It's only a matter of time before you pass away. It's only a matter of time before the scriptures get fulfilled in your life where it is that I once saw this wicked man spreading himself like a green laurel tree. And then now you see him, now you don't. All of a sudden he disappears. You literally just suddenly die. It's written of you all as well in Psalm 1. That you are like the chaff that is driven away by the wind. You literally just disappear. Though the righteous man may get up seven times, may fall seven times, he gets up each time. But the wicked are suddenly what? Overcome by what? Calamity. When? Suddenly. You die literally suddenly. But your warnings were not sudden. They were gradual. And they tend to have happened over very many years. So when you crash into a Christian, a head-on collision, better recognize that that is your grace, girl. Better recognize that a lot of people in the country that you live in, in their lifetime, don't even get to meet a very fervent, effervescent Christian. They don't get to have the whole, uh, to, like what is sumo wrestling match with a Christian that you, you've been awarded. Because frankly, that's what it is. It's an award. It's a gift. When God puts you in a fighting ring with a Christian, it's for your soul. It's for your soul. And sometimes you lose. You need to fight with the angel of God all night long like Jacob until he blesses you instead of curse you. That means you walk out of there with a limp for the rest of your days, but at least you are alive. At least you are going to heaven. That's what's good. So if you want to fight the angel of God to a point of conquering the angel of God, you can dream on. That angel will kill you. That messenger of God will end you. Or he will give you a limp. 
you can either embrace a tarnished reputation because why were you a witch in the first place while professing yourself as a Christian? You can either embrace that reputational dam damage, however, with salvation, that's what's good. You are re you're redeemed now. Get off the pulpit because you ain't got no business being a pastor, is that basic? Now be a parishioner, sit down and listen like all other little children, but at least you're going to heaven. Or you can insist on maintaining your position of opulence and power while fighting a believer at loggerheads making war all night long with an angel that you hope to conquer dream on the messengers of god the angels of god that encamp us basically the kingdom of heaven around that you are making war with you will lose it's one of those if you can't beat them join them even if it means you join them after they gave you a limp in your step so if what i'm doing is putting some bruises that are permanent on your face if i'm scarring you understand you are better off roaming these streets with a delivery one kudra on your face because i cut up your sister because I yeah, you sliced and diced you because I'm Zoro. That's what's good. You're better off rolling around with Zoro Z on your chest while you're still alive with that nasty scar as a beautiful woman rather than enter into hellfire with your skin perfectly clear like a baby's bottom. You're better off entering heaven. You are better off with all of the bruises I'm going to put on your faces by exposing all of your nasty random rubbish. As I am presently exposing all that nasty random rubbish of yours now, you are better off entering heaven with all that exposure and embarrassment. Embarrassment. Met your bonga sansin in these streets, gas streets, being exposed. You're better off taking that humiliation in your stride, however, with eternal life. Eternal life, do you understand? Then entering into hellfire, still being looked at as umuntuwe, chumzalanwe, tu. Usintana ganjan, wale ratoe tu. Yeah, wangu muntu aja be praising the living delights out of you. When you walk into your church, everybody's like, Everybody love you. But they don't know that you're like a low-key devil worshiper. You grabbed your girl and you left the destitute for 10 years. Girl, put you couldn't even get a job. Girl, you, that's you. Maraoko intercession. You running intercession, Ganjan. Everybody thinks you that dude. Everybody thinks you that chick. Church mamas rely on your vehicle. Every time there is an event, because you're always collecting them. Marawa lawyer. Take in your stride. Reputational damage. Sit down and stop preaching. Seeing as you're in no position to preach. You are going out there running when God has not sent you. Sit and listen. Because all these years, you've been insisting on talking when you don't know Christ. You are dabbling. You're mixing. You're doing all different kinds of nasty, strange stuff. And you're trying to go and grab a true servant of the living God. And make her do the stuff that you're doing. And when she says no, you are looking at her like she's Sandra D. Trying to cause her to say goodbye to Sandra to a point where the poor chiki can't even walk straight the way that she is so incredibly demonically attacked for almost two weeks out just staggering about like a drunkard not with strong drink but with affliction for real you've put me on the floor like i'm a doormat trying to walk all over a sister that's what's good don't know whether i'm coming or going fuzzy Tormented by stupid nightmares. People are just trying to strangle me. I had a dream of one of my former friends from high school. Literally, I don't know where she got all that strength. She had elevated me in the air. And my feet were dangling with her <laughs> hands around my neck, strangling me. And in my dream, I grabbed her hands and separated them like pliers. The way it was so easy. And she could not believe the strength that I had in Christ. And the song that was ringing in the background in that dream was bulletproof nothing to lose fire away fire away ricochet your bullet shoot me down and i get up i am titanium i've been telling you guys that god has been repeating that song on a loop in my head can't believe that i survived a death curse no this is what i can't believe y'all can't believe that i survived death curses what i can't believe is that you're trying to kill me the shock here that is appropriate is mine because it's shocking that you like graduated to murder when you couldn't get what you wanted regular janes and joes considered stellar citizens in their communities are using occult magic to kill people because they're too frustrating to deal with you're shocked that i survived your curses because they are apparently so strong that everybody else dies from them while well, i'm shocked that you're trying to kill me at all that's how far gone you are that's how depraved you've become that's how evil you are when under heaven when we were sitting eating lunch in high school did you ever imagine the day would come when you would be uh, you would literally have a, a rap sheet of attempted murder against Garab? that's what's shocking but when your conscience gets seared you don't see how shocking it is that someone that you shared lunch with in high school is now trying to kill you. That, that, that is what's bizarre. But the devil gets you to a point where you don't even see how bizarre that is. Do you understand what I'm saying? You need deliverance, people. Repent. I am not going to the world. I am never getting out. The Lord, I cannot be snatched from out of his hand. It's literally that basic. 
I am consecrated, set apart, a woman of a different status. I belong to heaven now. There's no turning back. I am in, I am in, I am in. It is a done deal. Yella. Firstan. Gupeli lehia. So an attempt to reverse any such activity as that is to bring about your own demise. You're finishing yourselves off. You who are lambasted by a guilty conscience you are trying to exsanguinate out of your bones. You're in danger of being handed over to so bad a reprobate mind that you no longer wince at things that regular folk in these streets wince at. When you are no longer perturbed by the sight of blood, by the prospect of the death of certain people, honey, you're done for. All of these attacks that are slapping me, I will admit, they're wearing me out. But the only reason why I even come here every day is for your sake, because that's what God will have me do. For your sake. That's his magnanimity. I am fed up and full to my the brim with exhaustion from all of your constant attacks. But for some strange reason, you are not dead yet. It's okay. God is magnanimous and he's waiting patiently for you. But understand, five seconds away from death is where it is that you find yourselves today. Because you just won't down tools. You are trying to get the teacher's pet to go to the club and twerk on a stage and strip it up a storm and go home with a guy she doesn't know. You are trying to commit the abominable and in Christ also the impossible. And in so doing, like the chaff that you are, you're going to be driven away. You will suddenly disappear. Calamity will land at your doorstep. You will find absolutely no reprieve for your sorrow because you decided that you're going to finish something you absolutely cannot. Because like Balaam, you are just trying to curse those whom God has have blessed. And just like Balaam, unless you prosper to counsel or unless you get counsel from Balak to cause the people of God to eat food sacrificed to idols and to also partake in sexual immorality, you can't curse them. Unless you cause a Christian to compromise, you can't curse them. So now y'all are trying to get me to compromise so I can successfully, once and for all, capitulate to a death spell. Once and for all, capitulate to whatever you want me to capitulate to. And so you are just making like Balak out here trying to foster some secular prophet to curse the people of God. You will be met with a donkey. Do you understand? That's going to tell you, boy. What have I ever done to you? Why are you brittling and beating me up? You can't curse those whom God have blessed. And you can't bless those whom God have cursed. That's what's good. I am waiting on Jesu Christe. And with me waiting on the Lord. Consecrated to him. All the best in conquering me. With Balaam's heir. All the best. All that will happen is that your animals will go crazy. And you will be swung off them. You will be flung off them. And you will be humiliated for trying to achieve the impossible. Some of y'all never mind humiliation. But you're facing death altogether. I'm not going anywhere. I am not going anywhere. I don't know how long it's going to take for me to conquer this thing. It's eating me alive. I, I am better today than I was yesterday. So I feel like I'm getting out of it. But it's still heavying me. It's the most spiritual war I've ever endured. But I guess the Lord knows what it is that he has set apart for us in advance, does he not? Mm. He knew just what it is that we would face ultimately. He knew. And he knew that after a Christian suffers towards their breakthrough, the spiritual war will be off the charts. It'll be astronomical. So what I'm experiencing now, goodness, I've never felt it before. And it is precisely because I'm at breakthrough point and all the servants of darkness are calamitizing me. Do you understand? However, at your own peril, it is literally at your own peril. You will perish en route trying to finish something you can't finish. Precisely because I am at the cusp of my breakthrough is the reason why you should be afraid to be very afraid because the, the, the my breakthrough is your demise. So the cusp of my breakthrough is therefore by implication the cusp of your demise too. Seeing as I'm so close to getting out of this, you do best to down tools. Do best to down tools. Just walk away. Get the step in. Otherwise, people be out there attending your funeral. I'm just saying. Currently, you are giving cold bed. You are giving cadaver. You're giving rigor mortis. You're giving perimortem and postmortem. At this point, you're giving autopsy. You are presently giving headstone and grave. Like a lot of soil and sand is giving uh, flowers. You know, funeral wreath, bereavement. You're giving all those kinds of words. And if at all you want to retract yourself from, from emulating ash dust crematorium, you'll repent. Is that basic? Do a better thing. I am warning you with a violent passion. 
because you will pass away many of you if you don't stop with all of these attacks at my person precisely because you're making an observation of me rising i will never walk away as stand ready from my god indeed i am bursting with virginity i will not go to bed until i'm lawfully wed that's just a thing so stop trying to cause me to fornicate stop trying hey, what's up? to Why cause me to do second? things Part. please go stop trying to get me to do things that i am highly unlikely not uh, and uh, ever going to do because i have not done them all this time i've been suffering for 10 years just based on stats alone the probability of me capitulating to whatever you want me to capitulate to especially now is excruciatingly low and some of y'all are graduates in mathematics for crying out loud at university you know you know that mathematically and statistically it is highly improbable that i'm going to end up doing what you want me to do given my fortitude my strength of character and what it is that i have endured so far and also given what appears to be the glimmer of hope that i am currently faced by what's impending me is obvious prosperity i have got some kind of semblance of thing to look forward to that coupled with the fact that all these years i've held fast to jesus guys just do the math literally i went to school with a whole bunch of maths students and science we went to varsity some of us did becomes adding a bscs y'all can do the math that's what i'm getting at you can utterly do the mathematics this is improbable what you're trying to achieve entirely it's bizarre that you would even think to achieve it and not only have got hope in sight but based on historical data i am in exquisitely highly unlikely ever going to do what you want me to do so stop trying you see which quite also makes you dumb it makes you ignore your own education your own formal instruction you can't even put it into practice to basically walk away this year is not yielding a positive net present value it's not going to bode well for you there is absolutely no return that can ever be feasibly anticipated to be acquired at this particular juncture you are just throwing money into sunken costs it's like maverick spend just walk away because it's improbable that you are going to get anything what what did it what, what it becomes when you are throwing money into a situation that is highly unlikely going to yield any fruit on that day you are like that random weird gambling junkie chilling at gold reef city casino at 3 a.m in the morning with their last 1000 rands after taking out a loan on their home loan on their mortgage just trying to win it all back seeing as they've already lost a good like 500,000 that's what you are right now you are a person that is gambling the last little cent that they have with the history of having lost everything down tools give up walk away it's maverick spend highly unlikely just quit negative net present value and it's also giving cold bed cadaver and autopsy so just repent i'm signing out in christ's name Cran k peace